Hey everyone, and welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. My guest today is Dr. Leah Macklin. We're going to learn all about her, how she became plant-based, and she's going to show us a really cool recipe, carrot locks. Please welcome her to the show. It's so nice to meet you. Thank you for having me. It's nice to see you too. Of course. As I always say, most of the guests on this show are from referrals for other guests. And you came from Shoba, who did many, many wonderful recipes. How did you guys start working together? We actually found each other on Facebook. There's a Gwinnett area vegan community in our area. And she posted one of her vegan potlucks. And I jumped right on that. Um, we connected and we started actually working together professionally as well, we did uh, group visits in my office, teaching lifestyle medicine and plant-based diet to help people with weight loss and get control of their cholesterol. Wow. So how did you become a plant-based doctor? Or were you a doctor first and plant-based second? Or tell us your story. Doctor first and plant-based second. Um, I actually had heard about Esselstein research and, and his preventive reverse heart disease book way back in residency. I heard about it. I was practicing in Fayetteville, North Carolina, and in that area, the, there's a lot of uh, fried chicken, a lot of uh, fatty processed foods. There's tons of chicken plants nearby. So I looked at that and I said, that sounds great. I've been vegetarian for 20 years. I like that information, but I don't think my patients will buy it at all. So uh, I put it to the back of my mind and kind of forgot about it until my dad had open heart surgery. He, um, he had really had very healthy diet for his whole life. He uh, biked to work uh, at least two to three times a week for years. He picked up wakeboarding at age 60. I mean, he's incredible. Um, he, his only vice was really, uh, an average of about, uh, 1.2 servings of ice cream per day. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah. between genetics and, uh, meat, dairy, he ended up with some pretty significant heart disease. Cholesterol wasn't so bad, but mine actually was considering I'd been so-called healthy for so long. So um, I bought him Esselstein's book. We all, he, my mom and I went plant-based and checked our cholesterols before and after. Each of our cholesterols dropped about a hundred points. So we, we couldn't go back. So we've all been doing that for the past several years. And yeah, you know, how many years has it been? Do you remember? About three and a half years of being plant-based. Wow. Plant-based, no oil. Has it changed how you practice medicine and interact with your patients? Oh, for sure. For sure. I, um, I got my lifestyle medicine certification last year um, and just realized, you know, I, I'm practicing this way. It's working for me. I kept encouraging my patients to do it. And I kept watching individual patients go into remission for their Crohn's, um, get off of insulin, get off of statins and overall feel better. So I, I looked up what formal training I could do to get um, more certified in that in that area and uh, found lifestyle medicine and got certified last year. So okay. now I actually practice a significant amount with plant, with uh, lifestyle medicine. That is fantastic. Did you learn anything about plant-based nutrition or nutrition at all in, in medical school? Basically none. <laughs> and I'm typical med student. They don't teach anything about nutrition at all. Um, I'm an osteopath, a, a DO, uh, which we're a little bit more holistic. So I did uh, some more holistic training, but it had nothing to do with nutrition at the time. A little bit about that, because we've had this question come up quite a bit, and I think people still sometimes are confused. And it actually mm -hmm. happened at a dinner party the other night where, where we had a doctor over, and somebody was saying, well, what's the difference between an MD and a DO? And also, you know, then there's also, you know, functional medicine doctors. And, mm -hmm. you know, they're, they're, so tell us a little bit of, about that. Sure, absolutely. Um, so MDs and DOs in practice are very similar. You will meet MDs who practice the exact same as DOs and vice versa. Um, we go to four years of medical school. We go to the same residencies. They're actually all combined now. 
and we can specialize in all of the same specialties, do the same surgeries, do the same procedures, everything in practice can be the same. The biggest difference is we learn a little bit more holistically as DOs. Uh, we believe that the body is a unit and uh, we can, uh, the body can heal itself if given the right environment. So we do not necessarily need uh, pills or surgery for everything. We can, uh, we can heal um, naturally. Uh, one of the fundamental things we do is osteopathic technique, which is kind of like chiropractics mixed with massage, mixed with physical therapy. I crack backs to oh, make wow. people feel better. So, so you could be in any specialty that an MD is and still be a DO. So it'd be like an emergency room doctor or a gynecologist and okay. Correct. Yes. Yeah. yeah. That's just so interesting. Are there more like MD schools than DO schools in the United States? There are. Um, the numbers are definitely higher in MDs and it actually in the Northeast, there's more DO schools. So a lot of people are more familiar with DOs if they live in places like Michigan or, or New York just because there are more schools up there. That's so interesting. Yep. So what's your specialty as a DO? I'm a family practice doctor. Nice. Yeah, I treat all ages. In practice, I mostly do six plus, um, but I love treating little kids. I love uh, treating all ages. Uh, I do a lot of procedures and I, I do actually do the OMM uh, technique still. Uh, the osteopathic manipulative technique. Yeah. What is that? I, I don't, I'm not familiar with it. Oh, that's the, that's the physical technique to uh, like um, kind of like chiropractics mixed with massage, mixed with physical therapy, where we, uh, we manipulate the bones, uh, nerves, ligaments, or, and muscles, uh, as well as lymphatics back to kind of a more neutral position to let the body heal on its own. Is there like, you know, like the AMA is the American Medical Association. Do you have one of those for DO as well? We do, the AOA, American Osteopathic Association. Nice. Well, thank you so much for clarifying. So that's kind of cool that like your whole family got on board so quickly mm -hmm. because that's a big problem for a lot of people, especially I, I know Thanksgiving's coming up and a lot of people are the only one that eats this way in their whole circle of friends and family. Yeah, I'm very lucky. Um, I bought the book for my dad and I really thought that he was going to use it as a coaster. <laughs> and when he decided to follow it to, to a T, I was quite surprised. Um, so I was pleasantly surprised. And um, even the people in my family who are not fully plant-based, they've been adopting a lot more of it, um, eating more whole grains. We When we have dinner together, they they do actually enjoy cooking, cooking beans and starches. What are you guys going to do for Thanksgiving? We do dinner together. We usually do some sort of lentil dish. Um, we, uh, we do a lot of asparagus and sweet potatoes and, um, yeah, pretty much, uh, same, same kind of dishes, just plant-based and oil-free. Right. So as a family practice doctor, you, you see all ages, I'm guessing, like from the very young to maybe the very old. So like when you have a very young patient, can you really talk about diet and lifestyle with them? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Kids are actually really important to talk about lifestyle because um, the food that they eat growing up is the food that they take with them. That's actually why I wanted to do the locks today is because growing up, I loved bagels and locks. Um, we, we would do that Shabbat after, after synagogue and we, you know, it was a comfort food growing up. So, uh, that's a lot of what I talked to my patients about, um, you know, the food you feed your family involve your kids in those, that healthy eating, involve your kids and cook with them and make it healthy and maybe don't even tell them that it's a healthy version. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Are you seeing lifestyle diseases in, in younger and younger populations? For sure. Yes. Um, I have, uh, and they're the population that you really don't want to prescribe a pill for them. You really want to fix things naturally with lifestyle, with diet and exercise. They, um, you never want to see kids on multiple pills. 
and you're seeing higher and higher rates of obesity in this country. I mean, over 40% of adults are obese and the rates of kids are in, with obesity is rising too. And I've, I've diagnosed type two diabetes in kids. I've diagnosed high cholesterol and fatty liver in kids. And the, the fix for that is lifestyle. And it comes from, from working with the parents and working with the kids to make the environment that they're living in healthier. Wow. And that's just, that's just sad really, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I, um, it's nice to see the change though, because I have had, um, I've had a number of people who've gone home and, you know, we, we work with them to, I work with them to find exactly what they're seeing as the barriers to their health. And maybe uh, dad is bringing in macaroni and cheese three days a week, and they really are kind of shy to tell their parent that they don't want that food. They're getting picked on, they're getting bullied, and they don't want to have to take a pill at, before they're 18. And it's wonderful to see how they, they actually grow and bloom because they they take ownership of being able to tell their parent, I don't want that food. I want something healthier. I, I want to feel better. Now that's, I don't know if you've ever dealt with this, but I, I hear from a lot of people where like uh, it, it's a, a, a divorce. So the kid sometimes is with one parent and the other, and one parent's healthy and plant-based and the other is not plant-based and sometimes even less healthy. And it, it's just seems so hard for the kid because, you know, one week they're getting, you know, kale and lentils and one week they're getting mm -hmm. McDonald's and it makes it hard for the palate. And just, it just, it's just, it becomes such a fight. Yes. Exactly. I, and that, that's actually the situation I saw recently. And I, I talked with, talked with them about speaking up to the other parent and gave them that confidence and it, um, they felt good. They actually took ownership and they, they felt better having, uh, the support from both houses, but yeah, it's very difficult. If one parent's not on board, then, then it can be a hard conversation. Yeah, it's hard for the kid. Yeah. Cause also it's hard for the palate because, you know, they, yeah, they eat the healthy food and then they eat the junky food and then the healthy food doesn't taste so good. And yeah, I hear that a lot. So your dad's health is robust now. It is. It is. We, um, yeah, he's back to, to biking several days a week. Um, we, yeah, we, we actually go on sometimes 40 mile bike rides there's, I live in Atlanta or just north of Atlanta, and there's a lot of green spaces here. So there's a very long uh, paved trail. And uh, me and my husband will bring our bicycles over. We'll meet up with him. We'll do the 30 miles, but he'll have already biked the 10 miles over there. Oh, does your dad tell your story, his story to anyone? He does. He does. He, um, he, he and my mom both uh, speak highly about their diet and they, you know, they believe it as a lifestyle and not just a, a temporary diet to lose weight or, or something just, uh, just to get their cholesterol down. It's, it's something that is lifelong and, and meaningful. And, uh, they've gotten a lot of their friends to change as well. Excellent. Um, yeah. Terrific. Is your husband plant-based as well? Not a hundred percent plant-based. He, um, um, he is, uh, pretty much all plant-based when we eat at home. Uh, he does what we call backyard to table. Uh, very rarely does he eat meat, but the, the meat he eats is usually more, let's call it sustainably farmed. Um, he, uh, you know, he will eat one deer in a year. Uh, I'm not a deer. That's <laughs> Yeah, I'm not a fan of seeing it, but I do give him a lot of credit. One of the other big things that I do, um, you know, this plant-based lifestyle for is the environment. Uh, I'm really big into sustainability. We compost. We try to take home zero plastic anytime we go to the store. So the meat industry in, in the U.S. is really terrible for, for the environment. And if you're going to eat meat, it's just sourcing it yourself is not the worst way to do it. Oh boy. Yeah. That, that might be the most difficult though, for a lot of people, you know? Oh yeah. No, I, I don't, 
I don't recommend it, but if you're going to do it and that's something that you you have the interest and and the ability to anyways, I guess it could be worse. What's the vegan or plant based scene like in Atlanta? It's great, actually, and it's really growing. I've met some amazing people, Shoba included. Um, Shoba was kind of my first introduction to um, more of the meetups. Uh, but she, there's a number of different groups all over Atlanta area and, um, there's a restaurant. I'm not from, I'm not sure if you know it. It's got a bit of a funny name, slutty vegan. That's hilarious. Yeah. Who, who is the chef there? That is a clever name. Pinky Cole. She's what? actually, she's amazing. It's uh, I wouldn't call it fat free, but it's, it's vegan and, uh, it's really, building up the vegan scene in Atlanta. And um, I think she started a number of other locations. I think she's starting one in Birmingham and don't quote me on this, but I think she's starting one in New York as well. Wow. I, I, I've never heard her. I'm going to have to look her up. I love the name of the restaurant oh, yeah. and the chef. Oh yeah. She's amazing. And uh, yeah, just what they do, I mean, they have lines out the door every single day. You, the first time I went to Nate there um, as a treat, uh, I think I waited in line about two hours. That is that. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. That's something. Yeah. Are you much of a cook yourself? I am. I love it. I love cooking. I, uh, I post a lot of my foodie pictures on Instagram. Um, so I, I post a lot there and I encourage my patients to look at the blogs and even find me if they want to. I, you know, I don't claim to be a chef, but I love cooking and I love making delicious food. So, um, I do a lot of, um, beans and vegetables as my normal diet, but, uh, but I like making extravagant salads and I love baking. I used to be a big baker before going plant-based. So now I do a lot of oat flour, um, baking with uh, applesauce and bananas. I do too. I, those are my favorite kind of desserts. What, what do you eat in a typical day? Mm, usually it's either about a smoothie or oatmeal for breakfast. Um, and then I usually prep my food for the week because I, you know, as being a physician, I don't usually have time to cook each day. So on Sundays, I do a lot of meal prepping and I'll prep a big instant pot full of uh, some sort of bean and whole grain dish. Um, sometimes I'll do a stir fry, uh, fry with the, no oil and um, uh, you know, whole wheat or um, uh, wild rice uh, or brown rice, um, sometimes quinoa and just have a lot of vegetables with it. Um, sometimes I'll do that for dinner. Sometimes I'll do uh, another smoothie or, um, a salad. I, I keep it pretty, uh, accessible in my fridge. So there's always something kind of go to that's fresh. I also like gardening. So, um, sometimes I'll just go into the back and I've got like turnips growing right now. So I'll just cut off a stem of turnip greens and um, make either a sandwich out of it or a salad. Nice. So you bring your lunch to work? I do every day. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. That's it's great. tough. I um, my I accepted a new position not that long ago, and this job they do bring a lot of food from reps, from drug reps, and they all. My staff love the the food that they bring and they bring it less if I'm not taking part. So I'll usually accept the food and then give it to someone else because I really don't like eating restaurant food that often. I know what you mean. We have yeah. some restaurants here that not only make vegan food, but if you call them in advance, they'll do a complete SOS free meal. It's fabulous. That's amazing. I know. I, I I just, I'm so happy. I didn't have that when I lived in LA. I, they just weren't willing to do it, but they're so accommodating up here in Northern California. I would love to see that here. I think they probably would if you asked, but it's, you know, it's a lot to ask to take out all of the salt and, and oil. And most cooks aren't, aren't used to that. Right. Right. Yep. Yeah. I had a doctor on recently talking about nutrition and cancer. He said, that's what restaurants do is addict us to sugar, oil, and salt. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. 
Um, do, and you, do you have time to make time for exercise in your busy day? Oh, yes. I would rather make sure that I have that time to exercise than um, spend a little extra time basically anywhere else. So uh, um, we have, uh, uh, I used to do jujitsu and MMA, um, but since COVID, I built a, a gym in my basement and uh, we have some heavy weights down there. I have mats. Uh, we do a lot of exercise, just classes over, over Zoom and um, make do with what we, what keeps you interested uh, on, on dreary days. Um, but I also, I like keeping everything variable. So um, we go kayaking sometimes, we go bike riding. My backyard actually opens up to a Chattahoochee Nature Reserve, which I'm really blessed to have uh, right behind me. So three mile long trail, just, just right outside my back door. That's cool. Any pets? Yes. Little, she's walking around here somewhere. Um, little uh, go-go, uh, fluffy white Bichon Shih Tzu mix. Oh, I love dogs so much. I think, I think, you know, we talk so much, you know, it's funny because you mentioned lifestyle medicine at the beginning and, you know, there's like, I guess, I think there's six pillars, right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, food, movement, sleep, um, social connectivity, avoidance of risky substances. Yeah. yeah. Is, there, is there five or six? I'm, I'm, miss, I'm missing any of them. I don't know. But yeah. the thing is, is somebody should put pets in there because I got to tell you, I, I, I had a cardiologist over for dinner yesterday mm -hmm. and I said, you know, I think this is, is good for your heart. <laughs> it's all the statins and low fat plant foods in the world, because I really do think that it, it, it's, it's not talked enough about how the, the impact that pets have on our health. They've done studies like it decreases healing time after surgery, lowering blood pressure, especially for people that are lonely and isolated. I think that there needs to be like another addition in lifestyle medicine. Agreed. Agreed. I think I think the vast majority of people in LM are going to be pet people, um, one form or another. Um, yes. I don't know how anyone made it through the pandemic without a pet, especially, you know, those that were, you know, like completely isolated for mm -hmm. a time, you know? Yeah, that was actually my favorite um, board exam that I took was when someone showed up with a with an emotional support animal. And every break I took, I got to sit and pet the dog. Oh, nice, nice, nice. So lox is not the healthiest food, uh, not just because it's an animal product, but mm -hmm. I think often because of it's served with things that are not the most health promoting, often bagels, which are white, often just a white bagel, you know, flour mm -hmm. and water and probably salt and yep. cream cheese, which is a bunch of dairy. I mean, the tomato and the onion, very healthy, you know, mm -hmm. so uh, how do we make lox without a fish? Yes. So we use carrots. Um, I went ahead and prepped some of my carrots um, so that I wouldn't have to, to uh, peel all of them. But uh, what we do is we use carrots and we actually peel them to be very, very thin. And when they cook up, they're gonna look just like lox. Um, one of the things I love about making lox from carrots is Yes, you can season it like fish if that's something that's a comfort food to you and you really miss that um, that animal product. Um, and it is really, really healthy and packed with um, isoflavones from the colorful foods that you can put into it. But um, you also really don't have to make it fishy if you don't want to. You can just make a marinated carrot and have it be a wonderful topping onto a rice cracker or Ezekiel bread or onto a salad or whatever you'd like. Nice. So, yeah. So I kept one carrot uh, ready to peel and I'm just going to this and you literally just peel straight across keeping this, the pieces very thin and not turning it so that it becomes uh, wider and thin the whole way down. Who invented this? I love these <laughs> genius people that think of, you know, locks from carrots and hot dogs from carrots. And mm -hmm. 
I don't know. I've seen the recipe on a lot of different places and they're all great. And I've seen a lot of different variations. Um, whoever it was is very creative. I've, I've also seen radishes where people make um, use radishes and marinate them, same kind of thing. And, and, and to, to taste lox like or to taste like something else? I've seen it as actually a Philly cheese steak using radish. Um, oh, yeah. You know, it's so funny. I was talking to somebody from Philly the other day because I became vegan when I was a freshman at the University of Pennsylvania on September 1st, 1977, over 45 years ago. And it happened so soon, like literally the first day of college, that I never got to try a cheesesteak. And there was that world famous oh, really? cat's cheesesteak. So to this day, I've never had a cheesesteak, vegan or not. So I hope I'm not missing anything. <laughs> I, I don't think so, I, but I haven't had one either. So I can't tell you. <laughs> okay. Yeah. There's so many things. Well, that's the other thing. You know, it's funny because growing up Jewish and Orthodox, I, I mean, I think it was a blessing and made it so easy to become vegan, especially at a young age, because I never tasted all the things that people love so much, like lobster or shrimp or crab or clams or oysters or, you know, uh, bacon or pork or pepperoni pizza, cheeseburgers. We just didn't really eat those things. So, you know, the few meats we ate wasn't very hard to give up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, same thing here. Um, I think I... Before I went vegetarian, because I went vegetarian over 20 years ago, um, I went plant-based only three and a half, but I, um, I've been vegetarian for a really long time. And I, I knew that I was going to be going vegetarian and I had never eaten any kind of pork product. So I made the decision to try a little piece and it, it was nothing to write home about. I decided, yep, probably could have lived without that one taste, but <laughs> Yeah. Well, sometimes you just gotta know, you know, but, and the thing is, is the things that, you know, I mean, I, the, I'm pretty sure the reason people like bacon is because it came from a pig. It's because of the sugar, fat, and salt that makes it mm -hmm. taste good. And you can get that in a vegan version. Even, even growing up kosher, we had I can't remember what it was called, but my mom, it, it was a kosher product that was bacon-like because it, they did all whatever they did that, you know, I, I think it was called beef fry or something like that. But the point is you can make things taste like a, you can make bacon out of uh, uh, coconut. Oh, interesting. Yeah. I, I mean, kind of like, I think it's similar to the technique you're doing. I did a long time ago in raw culinary school. I think you marinate it in like you know, some kind of sweetener and uh, nama shoyu or, you know, some kind of salty thing. And then you put it in the dehydrator. So oh, eggplant too, you can make eggplant bacon. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Um, most of those things, I, I look up the recipe and I, I try them once made like the meat and I realize I don't miss the meat. So right. I just make marinated eggplant or uh, marinated carrots in this case. Yeah. Nice. So this time I am actually going to flavor it with uh, fish, but most of the times, or not fish, but uh, with yeah. morning. You see, <laughs> yeah. and then and even I am like, do you know what show you're on? Okay, I'm <laughs> just kidding. That's do you do any batch cooking for yourself and your family? Oh yes, lots of batch cooking. Um, I use my Instant Pot pretty much at least once a week. Um, we we make a big pot of food and I, I just prep it out to my separate containers for the week. And that way I just can grab it out of the fridge. Much, much easier than having to, to go through and cook each day. Yep. Yeah. Nice. And this, you know, I'm I'm lucky in my current practice. I'm very, I have a good work-life balance, but that's not been the case through my career. I um, I've had, you know, 18 hour days. I've had 24 hour shifts before and, um, and having that importance of, of knowing that there's a, a healthy option that's in the fridge or in my lunchbox is really, really important. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. So we, well, how, how far in advance can you, uh, what's the word, the carrots, uh, uh, shape, shape um, the carrots. Yeah. So uh, if you're going to keep them, uh, if they're going to sit out, they should sit out in water. That's actually one of the, a cool tip that I learned for wilted carrots. Uh, again, a bit of the sustainability thing. Um, I can't eat everything in my fridge uh, sometimes. And 
uh, celery and carrots. What you can do is you uh, shave them, uh, peel the, the outside off, and then put it into water and they stay fresh for up to, they, they perk back up first off and they stay fresh for a really long time. So that's what I did today before we I logged on as I prepped some of my carrots and I just left them soaking in water so that they would stay perky. Nice. Yeah. And I just, while we were talking, I put them into uh, onto the uh, pot to boil. Um, so they boil for about 10 minutes. Uh, I preheated my water, so it's, it probably will take a little less time than that. But while they're cooking, I usually prep the marinade. Cool. I love to see your marinade. Sure. So uh, marinade is, and again, this one is flavored more fishy, but you don't have to do it fishy. You can do it pretty much any way you want. I usually use at least some vinegar. This is rice vinegar. And for this one, I'm adding two tablespoons of rice vinegar. And then I've got some soy sauce. If you don't do soy, you can omit it. You, again, you can use any pretty much anything else flavoring wise. Um, but I like the saltiness of it um, and it not being straight salt. Do you ever have some of the other ones like coconut aminos or? Yes, I didn't happen to have it on hand. Um, and Personally, I do soy sauce, but I do enjoy those other ones. Coconut aminos are so good. Yep. So I did a tablespoon of that, and then I'm doing uh, one tablespoon of lemon juice. And then I'm doing some smoked paprika and dill for flavoring. The smoked paprika, do you use that a lot in your cooking? That is my favorite spice, probably, honestly. Yeah. Same. I love smoked paprika. It makes it so dimensional. Everything that you that you eat just has that. It's extra complex, especially when you're avoiding a lot of salt. It just gives it gives everything just a great flavor. Oh yeah. Oh for sure. So I'm just going to add about a teaspoon of that. And there's if you're in ever in the Atlanta area, Atlanta has some amazing farmers markets. Um, there's a Buford Highway Farmers Market and DeKalb Farmers Market, and I get pretty much all of my uh, all of my spices from DeKalb Farmers Market. It's the freshest spices you ever use. You really don't need any salt if you use those fresh spices. Mm. Um, so I happen to have little containers, and I just refill them as I get the fresh spices, so that way they keep a little bit fresher. And this is dill. Ooh, dill. Mm -hmm. And that's it. And then I use these little sheets of nori. They're really good as just snacks, but it gives it a fishy flavor. You don't you need to use them if you don't like the fishy flavor. You can also use capers if you don't have nori on hand. You can use a little bit, you can use a lot. It's really very modifiable in terms of how much you do. And that's it, that's the marinade. Once the carrots are done cooking, you put the carrots in here, cover them with water, and they sit overnight or for at least an, about an hour or two. Easy. Really easy. Well, yeah. do, are you going to dehydrate this or? Um, so I fill it with water uh, up until past the carrots and then uh, then it just sits and marinates overnight. Right, but then do you eat it like that? You don't like cook it? Mm -mm. Nope, I just eat it like a, like a cooked, uh, so it's not, it's, it doesn't get that. Um, so I try to avoid some of the AGEs, the advanced glycosylated end products. So I avoid some of the dry cooking. So this is fully wet cooking. It's, uh, and it's boiled and then marinated. So it's really clean eating in terms of health products. That's cool. I don't know why I must've seen another chef do it, like maybe dehydrated or something. That's where I thought maybe you were going to do that. Yep. After it marinates, you absolutely can, or you can just mix it in and you can uh, roast it or bake it or, um, or uh, dehydrate it. Um, you absolutely can. It becomes a chewier texture, um, but I, I enjoy mine just marinated, actually. Well, that's pretty cool. 
Yeah. And then I also have um make sure my carrots aren't burning or over over boiling. Um so uh, a lot of times we use um, cream cheese on our bagels or or bread uh, underneath the locks, um, but you can make the same kind of thing out of um, soaked cashews. Oh, so, so so you do that? Is that like a like I know Miyoko Shinner had a book. I learned how to do that with cashews. It's great. I do. I love using cashews. Um, I do. I don't do a ton because they are a fattier uh, nut, but. If you want something creamy, um, white beans or or soaked raw cashews are great for that. I've also used pepitas and soaked raw sunflower seeds. Um, you use pretty much any raw nut seed or um, or again the um, uh, you can use beans, white beans. You can use silken tofu if you do soy, um, and you just blend it up, and it becomes a very creamy paste. Um, the one caveat is, you know, you have to watch the water content. So sometimes it's more of a sauce if you use silken tofu. Um, I've used firm tofu and made more of a ricotta type texture. Mm. Yeah, but I like using uh, soaked cashews for this. That's neat. You know, I was looking at your Instagram page and you have this beautiful like uh, chocolate pudding with whipped cream on it. Yes, my husband's birthday was recently, so I made him a vegan oil-free chocolate pudding, and he loves um, uh, uh, Black Forest cake, uh, so very much not plant-based Black Forest cake, but he actually was gifted a bit of a cake from his, his boss, so I told him I would make him pudding so that he didn't have two cakes, because we don't need... He didn't want two cakes, I guess. <laughs> very clever. What did you end up doing for the uh, whipped cream? I actually just bought some oat milk whipped cream um, just from the store. It, it comes in a can or a, a, like a, I, I, I haven't seen that. Yeah, actually. Uh, boy, I need to, I need to get out more. Um, it was a treat, um, but it's from Sprouts. I go, I have, I've, I have not seen that. That is very good to know because yeah. my husband eats a lot more of the fun foods than I do. That would be very yeah. cool for when I I'll be making for sure a pumpkin pie around the holidays, his birthdays around the holidays. So, oh, yeah. And I know they make one from almond milk. This one happened to be from oat milk. I think the almond milk is a little bit lower in fat because they have to add something to make it thick. But for a special occasion, it was great to have on top and it definitely made more of the black forest texture. That is really cool. Yeah, it's very pretty. I didn't, I, that was, I saw the whipped cream, I'm like, whoa, how did she make that? Ah, I've made some really good whipped cream, actually. I make a, a, um, a topping, a um, icing out of silken tofu. Um, one of the cool things, if you get Lily's white chocolate, um, or or dark chocolate. Uh, it's you can get the vegan one. You can get no sugar added, and um, you get it. Uh, you melt it into the silken tofu as it blends, and it actually firms up in the fridge, so it becomes a very creamy, delicious topping onto your cake. So I, I usually do that. I've done um, coconut milk. Uh, again, more of a fat, more of a treat, but you, um, you put it in the fridge before you crack open the can, and then you pour off some of the liquid, use it for your smoothies, of course, and <laughs> use the solidified part of the coconut milk, uh, whip it up, and it becomes exactly um, like whipping cream. It's rich, decadent. It's very much for special occasions, but it is good. Wow. Did you ever think of writing a cookbook? Because I, when I was looking at your Instagram page, your lasagna, your cheesy sauce made out of butternut squash, mm -hmm. your bean burger. I mean, the food looks delicious. Thank you. Um, I haven't thought of it. It would be a fun, fun task to do. Um, I enjoy eating my food. Um, maybe, maybe on my plate for no pun intended in the future. Uh, that's funny. Yeah, no, it looks really, really good. Nice. Do you ever give recipes to your patients? Oh, yeah. 
Definitely. Um, I actually have a full packet of information that I give them and uh, it gives, um, of course, the I, I have blogs, I have your YouTube channel on it, actually, and you. I have, you're welcome. Um, and I have, um, you know, books with more fact based, but then also a lot of recipe blogs because patients need a more directed, what do I eat this day, that day? They, when you, when they go home and they, they know that their doctor told them eat less fat, eat less refined carbohydrates. What does that actually mean in terms of food? They don't necessarily know. So, um, I usually ask them things like, what did you make yesterday? What walk me through a 24 hour food diary. Um, and let's talk about how to veganize and, and make those foods healthier to give you ideas or what's your favorite two to three dishes for dinner. Let's veganize that. Nice. That's yeah. cool. How long do, does the lox last, not the lox, the carrots once they're marinated? I think you froze. Hello, are you there? What is with Zoom? Oh man, second time today. Hang on. Can you see me now? Oh, there you go. Oh, thank goodness you came back. Okay. Uh, Sorry about that. Oh, no, that's okay. So um, um, I guess that's Zoom's way of saying, hurry up, lady. I was just wondering how long you could keep the carrots once they're um, so I, um, I've never had them go bad because I enjoy them too quickly. So I don't know exactly how long, but um, probably, a, you know, no more than about a week, I would say, um, because they're sitting in liquid, um, they really do stay fresh. So just like uh, reviving the wilted carrots, you see them and they, they can sit in the fridge for a week or two or three weeks and, and they stay actually looking really fresh because they're, they're sitting in liquid. Um, same kind of thing with the, the cooked carrots. Are you accepting new patients either in person or virtually? I am. Yes. Um, I will say, um, we, our office for virtual appointments, uh, our office does require that we see people in the office at some point. It cannot be solely virtual. So if you live in Texas, I probably can't see you unless you part-time live in Georgia as well. Um, but yes, if you live in the Atlanta area, please come see me because I love talking about plants. That's great. I, I'll make sure everything is right below this video and what's called the show notes, as well as all of your social media links and the recipe. Thank you. Yes, perfect. Um, while we're talking, I'm making the little cashew spread in the background. Nice. You just put the cashews, a little green onion from my garden that um, I prepped and I, I just chop them up and I freeze them for the winter so that that way after you grow nice fresh foods, you can have them taste fresh still. A uh, little lemon juice, a little bit of apple cider vinegar, and a little bit of miso. And I've got, speaking of those fresh herbs from the farmer's market, um, I've got some of their parsley flakes that are dried to sprinkle on top. And then I'm just gonna blend this. You got a little water though. Gonna be loud for just a second. Sorry. That's okay. Many of you guys, many of you guys made carrot locks. You want to know why they don't put Jewish people in jail? Because they eat the locks. <laughs> and then oops, the um, carrots are ready. So I'm just going to pull the carrots out, put them into my marinade. Oh, wow. 
and they become really, you know, um, easy to work with. What you're really kind of looking for is if you put your fingernail through them and they just, just start falling apart. Because if you think about locks as the fish, if you are aiming for more locks, locks similar uh, texture, um, it does still kind of hold together. Um, it does, it's not complete mush. So you want it to be um, a near solid. Um, and then I mix it all up. Maybe just lower your camera or raise it up just because. Oh, sorry. That's okay. okay. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, so I mixed it all together and I'm just going to add some water. And I left, um, I left the uh, cooking water away because I don't want to bring the carrot tasting cooking water into the marinade. Makes sense. It's a lot lower in fat and sodium and cholesterol than real lox. Exactly. And that's it. I mean, truly, um, you've got um, just carrots sitting in flavorful marinade. And I'll show you this. Have you ever tried your marinade with a different vegetable? Um, you know, I haven't, actually. I've read about um, I've read about turnips and radishes, as I mentioned, but um, but I really haven't tried um, something like this in them. I have, I have my turnips growing outside, so when once they're ready, I'm gonna try them in here. You know, I've taken just California balsamic vinegar, which you're going to get two free bottles of just for being mm -hmm. on the show and just oh. taking thinly sliced onion or cucumber and made like pickles and marinated onions just with vinegar. Oh, yeah. I love that. I am. Um, I very regularly do canning and jarring and I, I'll slice things up and, and store them in vinegar and let them marinate for a few days and use them on my sandwiches, use them as toppings. Um, just recently, recently made a sauerkraut for the first time as well from scratch. Um, I love fermenting things, but it's uh, it's always nerve wracking seeing something sit out on the counter for three days or seven days, and hoping that you know the good bacteria are living and not the bad bacteria. Yeah. Funny, um, but yeah, you can see the uh, what I ended up with is a beautiful little spread. Um, it's, I love adding color to all of my food. So anything that I can add color to, if it's roasted red peppers or green onions or spinach, any way to add color to eat the rainbow, I love adding it to that. And then I'm just gonna put it onto a slice of Ezekiel bread because um, I happen to have that in my freezer. But I do the same thing with um, like pieces of cucumber. You can do zucchini boats with this if you don't wanna do any refined carbohydrates at all. You can do rice cakes. You can really make it however you want. And of course, I'm gonna pull one of these out too soon, but uh, normally they would, the carrots would sit for, you know, overnight is ideal. In the fridge though, right? Marinating in the fridge. Correct. Yes. And there you go. Nice little onion and tomato on it and you've got exactly it looks just like locks in it person does. i don't know if my camera uh clarity is as good as it is or as my eyes are but um it looks just like locks over here it's really kind of wild cruelty free locks exactly full of full of vitamins and nutrients Right. Well, this was a lot of fun. And I think anyone could make this recipe because really no special equipment really was required mm -hmm. other than a vegetable peeler, which most people have. Yes. Yes. Blender, vegetable peeler, and a stove. Very easy. Yeah. I like easy. Well, well, thank you so much. This was a lot of fun, Dr. Macklin. 
Thank you so much. It was really great being here. Yeah. And thanks so much for being plant-based. My pleasure. Right. And thanks all of you for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. Please come back tomorrow when we have another fabulous plant-based physician, Dr. Anna Negron. Take care, everyone. <laughs>